So we were recently presented with two patients that both could not walk in all four limbs, what we call non-ambulatory tetraparesis, but they had very different localizations. So just wanted to talk with you a little bit about telling the difference between non-ambulatory tetraparesis due to an upper motor neuron lesion versus non-ambulatory tetraparesis due to a lower motor neuron localization. The first patient was a one-year-old female spade pit bull mix with an acute onset of inability to walk in all four limbs. On examination, she can move her limbs, but she's not strong enough to support herself and just sort of buckles over in all four limbs. But if we lay her on her side and check her reflexes, she's unable to withdraw her limbs in all four limbs and has an absent patellar reflex or absent knee jerk reflex. This tells us that she has a problem affecting the lower motor neuron system. The second patient was a three-year-old male neutered mixed breed that was unable to walk in all four limbs. If we supported him, he also could not walk and buckled over in all four limbs. There was a little bit of movement in the right rear limb. When we flipped his paws over or checked his postural reactions, they were absent in all four limbs. But when we lay him on his side and we check his withdrawal reflexes, he can pull his limbs back. And when we check his patellar reflex, he did have a normal to increased reflexes in both rear limbs. So our list of possible causes for lower motor neuron tetraparesis include things like tick paralysis, botulism, fulminant myasthenia gravis, polyradiculoneuritis, or what we call coonhound paralysis. Less likely we see things like coral snake envenomation or polymyositis. Whereas dogs with upper motor neuron non-ambulatory tetraparesis, we think of things like intervertebral disc disease, um, acute non-compressive nucleus pulposus extrusion, fibrocartilaginous embolism, discospondylitis tumor, trauma, etc. Tests for dogs with lower motor neuron tetraparesis include things like a thorough tick search, blood work including a complete blood count, chemistry panel including a CPK, chest x-rays to look for things like aspiration pneumonia, mega esophagus, and mediastinal mass, abdominal radiographs to look for any evidence of eating dead animals, which we associate with botulism, um, potentially a tensilon test or neostigmine challenge, and an acetylcholine receptor antibody. Tests that we do for dogs with upper motor neuron non-ambulatory tetraparesis include things like blood work, x-rays, but typically require an MRI of the neck in order to diagnose things like intervertebral disc disease, trauma, infection, fibrocartilaginous embolism, spinal cord tumor, and meningitis.